Safety first. We're gonna test some, I'm assuming some pretty strong stuff today. These are homemade permadraws. Things you can leave outside because you're technically not supposed to leave nylon quick draw dog bones outside and leave them out all the time to just rot in the weather in the UV. This is supposed to be, you know, something that lasts a long time. So this permadraw is by Climtech and they're either hard to get or they cost a bunch. And so my buddy decided to make a whole bunch of these. Now, if you have a calipers just sitting around, you'll see that this is measured at about 5.6 millimeters. And the cable my buddy used is six and a half millimeters. So it's a full millimeter thicker of a gauge, which is probably gonna break a lot stronger no matter how he did it. <laughs> That's not true, it's all in how you swage it. Now you'll notice this thing doesn't have any thimbles, whereas these do. Now some of these don't have a thimble, other ones have a light duty thimble, and this one has a heavy duty thimble. And the point of a thimble is to have a nice bend radius so the cable doesn't get pinched, which makes it weaker. We wanna maintain as much strength as possible from these. Now, d first of all, doesn't matter because your carabiner you're clipping to this is only rated for about 20-ish kilonewtons. If we're gonna get 60, and I hope to God we don't, uh, does anything matter at that point? Now, this is a homemade dog bone that we tested and it broke half of what a rated dog bone is for. Now, the variable in these cable draws, instead of stitches, is the swages. Now, all of these have four crimps on the swages, but some of them are Minnows, some of them are really good and we're just gonna go through them and see if any of them make a difference because if you can just Crimp it and call it good. Can you make your own? A permanent draw is permanently up which means other people depend their lives on it It's one thing to do something nuts if it's your own life It should should be pretty reliable if other people rely on it with their lives. Let's go break stuff Heavy-duty thimbles bad swaging. Let's see what happens. So in English, that is 36 kilonewtons. Wow, that's a heavy duty thimble got crushed. Oh wow, the cable broke. Even though this is a quote unquote bad swage job, it broke the cable. It's not like it came out. So I don't know if we're gonna get better results out of the other dog bones. I guess we'll just have to stop the video here. So most steel carabiners do not like to go above 30 kilonewtons and if they do go above 30 kilonewtons, they don't always work. So we use these chain shackles and the pin inside of this is about 12 millimeters, which is super close enough to a carabiner. So we're comparing the right diameter in these thimbles. Heavy duty thimbles, poor swaging on one side and the cable is short. Wow, that's almost the same result. Oh, it did what Dyneema does it has the one random strand sticking out of the other, ouch. Careful, we got some frayed cables around here. Pretty much broke in that, it's not like it came out. And this heavy duty thimble is crushed. Light duty thimbles and a super good enough swage. Oh wow, different result. Oh, that is a different result. Hey, hey, the swage does matter. The light duty and the heavy duty I don't think matters when you're pulling it up to its final breaking strength. But this came out right below of its maximum strength anyways. The swage he thought was good is the one that slipped. This one has good swages, light duty thimbles, and it's got heat shrink. Need a weapon? There you go. <laughs> These ones are excellent with a light duty thimble. Now we know the MBS have heat shrink. I hate consistent results. It makes the video way more boring. Number six is an eight out of a 10 swage with a loose thimble. Whoa! Don't take any 35 kilonewton whippers. Oh wow, it still wiggles. So this one had no thimble and you can see that it had such a big effect on that. I mean, this is kind of cool. It is different than what I normally break. So this last one also has good swages and the eye on one side is small with no thimbles. Seventy-seven hundred. 
So this mostly broke where the swage was, except where it didn't. Now for the grand finale, we have one of the Climtech rated ones for 22 kilonewtons. It is a millimeter thinner, but I think it's still gonna break higher than 22, which would be ideal. This swage is, is just one big fat crimp, so it is different and it has no thimbles. Let's see what happens. <laughs> no. Who knew hitting that peak force number was so important? Whoopsie. Uh, based on my load cell in my ears, that definitely broke lower. Probably more around what it was rated to. 22 kilonewtons. Look who came to visit. We have some dog bones from other manufacturers. We have a camp one and a fix one. And I will hit peak force this time on the load cell so we know what they actually break at. Since I want to know what a, uh, a professionally made rated dog bone breaks at. So our first one is the Camp Cable Express. It is 18 centimeters long. It is rated for 23 kilonewtons. It has a thimble and these are still available on the market unlike Climtex. That's a good guess. I like that margin of error. <laughs> Overkill is underrated. So a lot of extra material here in case you're one of those people that grabs the dog bone. So it's got a thicker plastic covering. Yeah. Protects the cheaters. <laughs> <laughs> the next one is from Fix, 36 centimeters long. It's a little bit longer, which is why we carry that since Camp didn't have one that size. And this is rated for 22 kilonewtons and it has a thimble in there as well. This kind of just shows how much difference you can have in the swage. And it came out, it didn't break. Above its rating. Yep. That's all I guess it needs to do. In our test, thimbles did not make any difference with the ultimate strength, but that's not their only purpose. They are a wear component. So if your dog bone is hanging here in the Is that what it wearing, looks like when it blows in the wind? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, or you're falling on it a bunch. Um, this metal here is going to take the wear and not the strands of the cable, which can break one by one and yeah. eventually fail. Yeah, thimbles, thimbles are a great wear component. So the conclusion to my other video where I tested homemade sewing dog bones out of nylon, not for permanent application, was that don't make stuff at home unless you can test and verify it because it was breaking at 11K in when it should be breaking at 22. They thought it was gonna break in the 20s and it didn't. And that's scary that they didn't know that. And I think that is a great conclusion for this video. Um, there are a number of ways to do swages super good enough, but there are also ways that they'll fail really low. There are several climbing manufacturers, small batch stuff. They, they were selling stuff that were swage that were failing way lower than they thought they should because their machine stopped working and they weren't doing the proper tests to make sure it was giving a good product. And the biggest beef I think I have with this is when you're making gear that other people are gonna be depending their life on. I'm all about doing sketchy stuff for stuff I do, but when it's something else other people are gonna pin their life on, like a permanent dog bone, it should be super duper good enough. Brought to you by the big cable industry. <laughs> they don't want you making this stuff at home. No, that's probably not the case. No one's probably getting rich off of this. But if you are gonna buy perma dog bones or any other climbing gear, please do it at howNotto.store because that supports what we're doing here. Thanks for watching. Cheers.